Amen. Looks like our youth group had a good time. Amen. I want to thank the McCarthy's and their family for hosting our youth group uh, summer swim party this past Wednesday. Man, what a bless it is. Just have people in our church just willing just to take time out of their, their schedule and, and just use what they have just to, to sow in kids' lives. And I don't know. I just really felt impressed. During that song a while ago, if you're a college student, I'm not going to embarrass you. My message is stand up. If you're a college student, stand up. Stay standing. We're fixing to plead the blood over you guys. God, Jesus. You know that song we were singing, God. We plead the blood, Jesus. God, I plead the blood over every college student that is about to stalk on these universities and these campuses across this nation, Father. God, that you have sent these kids to go in to be a sold-out believer for the kingdom of God, Father. God, I just pray over their mind. I pray over their soul. I pray over their body. God, I pray that God, right now, Father, you put a hedge of angels' protection encamped around them, God, that no devil in hell can attack them, God. But God, we loose the Spirit of God, Father, that will flow freely from heaven. Give them the words, God. Give them the, the, just the statue to stand against the, the walls of the enemy, Father. In Jesus' name, Father, you say in your word, how can they go unless they're sent? Tonight, God, we send them out. In Jesus' name, the church said, Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank y'all so much. I do have a little bit of a testimony. If my wife is going to kind of give the word, then there's a little bit that I, I have to sum up for those. Thank you for visiting us on Facebook Live. During praise and worship, you know, my wife was talking about that, uh, you know, I was delivered back in 20, uh, 20, 2000, 2000, February 14th of 2000. Yeah, however many that is, 2000. But, you know, and she did a great job telling, you know, the Bible teaches to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But, you know, the same God I was serving then is the same God I'm serving today. And I don't know who this is for, but how many of y'all know what this is? I'm going to tell you. What the enemy steals from you, he's got to give you back. Amen. I'm going to tell you, whatever the enemy has stole from you, he's got to give. We could go ahead and preach a whole message about seven times. I mean, we could really dig into this. But what I'm going to tell you, the next little bit of that testimony she didn't tell you, that happened February the 14th, 2020. I mean, 20, not 20. February 14th, 2000. Right there in that trailer house. Bottom of the hill there. Walked out on the porch one night, and God said, who's bigger? Me or that 1.5 ounce can. I said, God, you're so much bigger. The Holy Ghost fell, man. The, the Spirit of God fell. I can't tell you. Finals rodeo. And stood there with several of my bear bear riding friends and received a belt buckle that said Copenhagen Skull, Chief and Bearback Rider, and, Rider, and a check for $6,500. So what I'm saying is, what the enemy stole, the <laughs> God made him give it back to me. Amen. So that was just a free bit of, of entertainment there. But yes, God did give me all the money I spent uh, back. So anyway, today, I can't be more excited for you to be at church today. I didn't think 5 o'clock was ever going to happen because this word is burning in my heart. This whole years have been about authority. And if you haven't re understanding the scriptures about authority by now, hopefully you will before we finish this year. Amen. But I have, a, I have something I want you to get a hold to today. The title of today's sermon is, You Have the Authority to Remove It. You have the authority to remove it. You know, it's crazy that, you know, it's crazy that my wife stands there and tells y'all a story. She doesn't know the title of my scriptures yet. See, I had the authority the whole time to remove something from me that I wanted, but what I wasn't doing is I wasn't tapping into God's word. I was trying to do it on my power, on my terms. You know, I can, I can remember it like it was yesterday. Okay, I'm going to narrow it down to three choose a day, or this or that. You know, you know, we've all been down that road. We're going to do it on our own terms. I didn't go back to Matthew 6.33. And begin to seek God first. Get up and read His Word. Read His Word. Study His Word. Read His Spend Word. Time in Spend time, time in prayer. Spend time praying in the Spirit. Praying in the spirit. God Allow God to develop something, to develop inside, something of inside of me. Here's what I'm going to tell you Here's today. Here's what I'm going to tell you today. You had the you authority, had the authority to, remove it. to remove it. What in your what life, in your life do you? What in your life? What in your life do we have? What do we have in our life that is not, that is not adequate for God to build on? 
What's going on in, What's your, going life? On in your life? I mean, maybe you've got, I mean, maybe you've got some anger, maybe you've got anger. Maybe you got some bitterness. Maybe there's some unforgiveness. Maybe there's some just some doubt. Even if God's even real, what what were some areas in your life today that you know because of this, there's an area in my life God cannot build on. There is not a strong foundation there. I'm sure y'all know. I'm sure y'all know. I got the rock below me. But anyway, but anyway, here's what the Bible says, what the Bible says, says in Luke chapter 46. six, verse forty-six. But why do you, call, why me do you Lord, call me Lord, Lord? Okay. Okay. Every one of us in here, are we calling him Lord, Lord. Why do we call him Lord, Lord, and not do the things he say? So I got a question today. Are you calling him Lord, Lord, and not doing the things he say? But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my saying, and then he's got these words right after this, and does them. Parents, have you ever been like that? Kid, if you would just listen to me and do what I say, I promise you'd be a lot easier on you. I promise you the benefits that you would get from minded would just be a lot better than just trying to do it your own way. I mean, does God, God was just writing this about us or what? He says, whoever comes to me and hears my On the rock. The, the, guy, the, the guy, guy who dug deep, deep and, laid his, and laid his foundation on the rock. I heard a saying this weekend, and man, it just resonated inside, inside me. Said this: anybody on level, level ground can build a shack by the track. You can build a shack, you can build a shack by the track on level ground, but brother, if you're going to build a skyscraper, you know what you better get to doing? You better get to digging deep. And if you're going to do something for the kingdom of God, if God's going to use you, here's what you got to do. You better have a foundation of why you believe God's word when you step on that campus, college students. You better know why you believe in Jesus. You, you, you better have an answer because what I'm going to tell you is, is the devil is going to try to call, tell you that this book is a lie. But church, I'm going to tell you there's nothing more true. He says here, building a house who dug deep and laid his foundation on the rock and when the flood arose and the streams bent vigilantly against the house it could not shake it could not shake it for it was for it was founded on the rock on the rock Luke chapter 6 Luke chapter 6 39 says this but he who heard and did nothing do you realize that church we can do that we can come to church Sunday after Sunday go to the Bible studies we can go to youth group we can do it all and here 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 and never do understand understand it is possible to be sitting in a church pew sitting in a church seat doing the activities of church and here and, and not doing because he says here but he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built his house on the earth without a foundation church today church today how do we build our foundation it's pretty simple by doing what we hear. Being a doer, being of, God's a doer word, of God's word, James 1 and 22 and says, and only. not being a hearer only. It says, it says another this man against, against which the stream beat, uh, eventually uh, against, against it, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. Was great. So we have a so we have understanding, a understanding today. Choice. There's a choice. We have a choice, we have a choice every day. We can hear God's, we can word, hear and God's word and do it, or we can hear God's, we can word, hear God's word and ignore it. And ignore it. Church today, Church I, got today I got a question. How do you look, How into, do you your look into your life? How do you look, How do you look in your life and ask God, and ask God, God, God am I doing, am your, I word? doing your word? See, we have to, we See, have we have to, to, we have to analyze. analyze. We have to inspect our life, right? I mean, we could talk about, I mean, about fruit really inspections. We could really dig into this. But my question is today, how do you look in your life? And what we want to talk about is lenses. What lenses do you use to look into your, look life. Into your last life. life? Last night, you, last know, night, you can ask my wife, I went to put my glasses on, and I, and I was blind. All of a sudden, All of a sudden my glasses work. did not work. And thank you, Taylor, and thank for, you, Taylor for right before church, she put the right lens back in. Lens, and without that lens, I can't see, I can't see anything, anything, okay? I mean, it just, I mean, it just doesn't work. Without these lenses, without these lenses I, can't see I can't see these little bitty letters in this book. But also, when we look in through the lens of our life, one lens we might begin to look in just because we were raised might just be the lens of religion. As long as I meet the requirements of a religion, I'm going to be okay. Maybe it's the lens of a doctrine. You know, you got to think about this, church, of how many doctrines out there they can't all be right. If I'm asking yourself a question, are you 
reading God's Word? Are you learning God's Word for yourself? Do you look at your, Do you life, look in at your life in the lens of social media? Of social media? I got 1,200,000 likes a for a sinful post that I posted. So it had been good, so right? It had been good, right? lens are you looking at your life here's a strong one, here's right, a strong here. one right here what about the lens of, what your, about peers? The lens of your peers if your peers if are your peers are approving of your behavior you're bound, you bound to be doing good i mean you're, I mean, doing, what you're doing what they're everybody doing everybody's we're happy just we're together. just going to hell together in a handbasket no. so no church today, church today. we don't look at, we our, don't life look at our life by the lens, by the of, our lens of our peers we look at our we life by the lens of the word of god Last and foremost, Last and I'm going to speak, speak up today. Speak up today. How, about the lens How about the lens of ease? This is really the pretty. This is really the pretty. For a lot of us, it, I, mean, lot of us it, I mean, this is pretty kind of easy. If, if everything's going smooth and easy, and there's the water's, water's, not, getting water's not getting ruffled, and everything's just kind of going let's smooth, just go let's just go down that lens, right? But you know, there's, you know, there's sometimes in our life, life we got to say, "Hey, wait, this little smooth, this little smooth wave here is going to be stagnant before long." You know, we got to begin to make sure that sometimes the path of least resistance isn't the path that God calls us to go down. Today, if you've, Bible, if you've got your Bible, 2 Timothy, Second chapter, Timothy chapter 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, reads like this. Remind them, Remind of, these them of these things, charging them before, charging the, Lord, before the Lord, not to strive, not about, to strive words. about words to no profit. If you talk a whole, lot, you talk about a whole lot about a whole lot of nothing, and it's to no profit, and it's to no profit learn, to be quiet. learn to be quiet. To the ruin of, to the, the, ruin of the hearers. He says here, he says but, here be but be diligent to present yourself approved to God. See, we have a mandate, See, we have for, a God. mandate for God. Be We're to be diligent. Do you know what it is to be, diligent? Diligent? Is to be diligent? I mean, to be I mean, sold out. To be I, sold out. I mean, to be determined, to be diligent, to present yourself approved to God. Someone who sits on Someone the fence, on the fence and, and watches everybody else do the work. No. He says, be diligent, he says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, approved to God. A, worker a worker who does not, who does need, not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing, rightly the, dividing word the word of truth. We don't get a, we don't get a, free, pastor. a free pass, well, church. Because well, because I was raised this way or I was raised that way, I'm going to have a free pass, pass, to, pass to, to skate through to heaven. Church, you have, church, a, mandate you have a mandate to be diligent to, be to, God's, diligent word. to God's word and daily, and daily rightly dividing the word of truth. He says, but to, he says shun but to shun profane and idle babblings, for they will, for they increase, will increase to more ungodliness, to more ungodliness and, their and their message will spread, will like, spread like cancer. And I'm going to go ahead and say, and this, go ahead and say this just because I think it needs to be said. Not every fight, not out, every fight out there do we have to join. Not every fight, not every, not every, fight, argument, not every not argument, not every keyboard warrior, keyboard do, you warrior do you need to go up against. Fight the fights that God puts you in with the Word of God. Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes casting your pearls before the swine, you're just going to get dirty as they are. I don't know who that was for, but take it what it is. So, so God teaches us, God teaches to, rightly us to rightly divide the Word of Truth. Well, well in February, in February, can y'all believe, can y'all believe it was February? We poured a slab. We poured a slab. And on day three, and on day three anyone could see, anyone could see the that the slab was bad. We started, we started making, making phone calls. calls. We started, we started calling, calling people. people. And, here's and here's what I was told and had to deal, had with. To deal with. I was told, I was told, was told there was nothing wrong with it. I was later, I was later told, told it was close it was enough. Close enough. But test, but test after test, after test, test, after after test, 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 test the, concrete the concrete failed. Today, if you, Today, go, if you go under the new church, you'll see great, you'll ruins. See great ruins. It was great. It was great. Was great there is great ruins. Because why? Because why? Because there was. Because there was. Although that looks heavy, and, that looks stout, heavy and stout, there was there was too much too much air. air in the in the concrete. There are standards, there are standards that, are that are set, and then they took, and the, microscope they took the microscopes and they begin to examine this concrete. They took the, they took the lens of examining concrete, of examining concrete and ASTM standard, ASTM standard says you can have 3% air. But our concrete came, but our concrete came back to be 14% air. Church, 
Church, what I'm asking is today, us as a church, are we pumping air into our word? Are we putting fluff in our word? In our word, you know what, God? As you know what, God? As long as we get close enough, here's what I'm going to tell you: When this concrete is stressed, is stressed it's supposed to have been at 3,500 psi at poor date, it should have been at 4,500. It broke at 1,200 and 1,700 psi. It wasn't strong enough to build on. And it took from February to Saturday. Was that August 8th? Was that August 8th? What was Saturday? Eighth of August. Eighth of August. From February, from to, the February to the eighth of August to get something to get done. Something done. I'm gonna tell you on Thursday. Tell you on, thir- on, Thursday on, the, on Thursday, there was a bunch of trucks, out, bunch here of trucks out here trying to stop, trying to stop what's today. going on out there today. But, but, well, I know. Well, I know. I know who my God. I know who my God is. is. And I know my God. And I know my God is concerned, is concerned about, what about what we're doing for the kingdom. And I know my. And God I know my God. It's going, to put the right it's going to put the right people in my corner. In my corner. When I say my, I'm, I'm talking about us as a church. Church, God, church, puts, the God right puts the right people in front of And here's what I'm going to tell you. It's time to go up to bat. We were prepared. We were prepared. If you look at the size, of the look at the size machinery, out there, machinery out there, we're prepared. God put, God the, right put the right people in our path. In our path. So what you've got to so know, know now, this week, this week, that concrete, that concrete will come out. There'll be a new foundation, be a new foundation squared back up. There'll be new iron put in the ground. There'll be new boards put around. Not this Monday, Not this Monday, Monday but next Monday, Monday, a new slab pour. Man, I'm so excited, Man, I'm so for, excited God for what God is doing. But what you've got to understand, what you've got to understand today, today, church, is as, is as there, was so much there was so much to face, God had someone, God had someone right, there right there to help us as a church walk through it step, walk through by, step, step, by, step by step by step to the point of saying, the point of saying I'll, carry the I'll carry the note. I'll carry, I'll carry the issue, the issue of, what's of what's going on out here. I'll take the, I'll blunt, take the blunt of it, and I'll settle, and I'll settle it later. It later. But what I'm going to see is, see is, is I want to see that church your church on Labor Day, Labor Day Sunday, Sunday move, into move into that building. Church, church, church I, don't I don't know how it's going to happen, but I can tell you this. It's going to happen. That's Next Monday, the slab's going to be poured. By that Friday, we're going to have walls up. The AC's going to be hooked up. The insulation's going to be on the walls. We might be some 24-hour day, day working out there, but what I'm going to tell you is what the enemy meant to stop by making something that you couldn't build a foundation on, God came and repaired. Church, what I'm going to tell you is today, whatever it is that the enemy has tried to stop you from doing what God's called you to do, since you can't be who you're, maybe God's called you to be a, a youth leader or this or that, and you said, I can't because of the, I've got too much brittle ground. Church, what I'm going to tell you is when God comes to your gifts, he moves that sin as far as east is from west. What you going to say? When you, God, you come to God, he said, old things pass away. This old slab is going down the road, and the new slab's coming in. See, church, your old things are going to pass away, and the Bible says all things become new. Church, don't let the devil begin to tell you you can't be used for the kingdom of God because of your past. What I'm going to tell you is, God can wash that past right away. God can use you today. So I've got a question, church. What you do life with, do you compromise? Those people that you do life with every day, do you compromise your character? Do you compromise your walk with God? Do you compromise or do you stay true to God's word? What you don't want to hear, church, is stand before God and say, God, wasn't it close enough? It was at 1,200 PSI. And God said, man, why didn't you just do what I said to do? Why didn't you just give that to me? I sent my son Jesus. His blood is sufficient, church. His blood is sufficient. We just sang about draw that bloodline. Hey, there ain't no demon in hell going to take you out. Let God be God in your life. Where do you set the bar in your life? Whenever you're serving God and this is your Christian walk, where do you set the bar? Do you say, Jesus, I'm totally committed to you. God, I'm sold out to you. Or as long as I check Christian box off on Sundays and I, you know, at least say my my prayer before I eat lunch, where everybody sees me, then that's a pretty good bar. Where do we set the bar, church? Let's
served him in purity and in truth and put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river of Egypt. He says, serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose yourself this day whom you'll serve. Maybe today you're here and you say, man, which I don't believe you'd be here if you was there, but think today, who are you going to serve? When you go to college campus, I promise you the devil's going to be there ready to be served. Who are you going to serve? As far as, as, me, far and as house, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. So the people, so said, the to people him, said to him, far be it from, us, be that it from should, us that we should forsake the Lord and serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought, he us, who brought us and our fathers, and our up, fathers out Egypt, up out of Egypt from the house, from of, the bondage, house of bondage. Who did who those, did great, those signs great signs in our sight. In our sight and preserved, and preserved us, and all, preserved and all, us, preserved all us way, all the way that we that we went among, went all, among the people, all the people through whom we passed. Whom we passed. Today, church, Today. have you seen God in your life? Have you seen God bring you through things that you never thought He could bring you through? What I'm going to tell you, church, today: serving God is going to be consuming. It's going to be consuming of your time. It's going to be consuming of your energy. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be costly because you're going to have to give up on me and myself and say, God, not what I want, Father, but what Thou want. But what's going to happen is, church, whenever we say, God, Thou will be done, we'll begin to see greater things, greater things, things that you never thought you could do, places you never thought you could go. So four things in closing. When you sow seeds of righteousness, four things I want you to know. It's going to be time-consuming. It's going to be costly. You can't compromise. But in the end, it'll be right. Next Monday, not this Monday, but next Monday, that new slab's going to be right. And if it's not, we'll tear it out again and do it over. But it's going to be right this time. We've had some meetings. It's going to be right. But I'm going to tell you, church, today, understand your foundation of the Word of God doesn't come through anything other than the Word of God. Allow your life to be built strongly on God's Word. If you're not reading God's Word, if you're not studying God's Word, if you're not spending time in prayer, I encourage you today, make a commitment to saying, God, here I am, use me. God, here I am, teach me. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you, Father. God, I thank you for today, Father. I thank you for our service, God. God, I thank you for what your word teaches us, God. God, your word teaches us today, Father. We have the authority to remove it. Whatever it is that's standing between us and you. Today, church, if you came into this building and there's things in your life that you're saying, God, I need, to, I need God to remove. We as a church need God to remove that slab, and he did it. He's doing it right now. Maybe yours is another mountain, whatever it might be. By the word of God, you have the authority to speak to it. To speak to it through the authority that comes from Jesus. Speak to your mountains. Speak to those issues. Say, God, Jesus, I ask you to remove that bitterness. God, remove that heartbreak. God, remove that unforgiveness that I'm, I can't just get past. Whatever it is, God. Help me tonight to walk in the freedom that comes in knowing you. Father, we love you, God, and I thank you for everyone that's in here. And God, I know I've talked a lot about college kids, and we've got a lot of high school and elementary kids. Kids, I want y'all to know you have a battlefield. You're just as important. Your, your mission isn't any less. Go to all the world and preach the gospel. Moms and dads, sisters, brothers, cousins, 
grandparents, wherever you go, you take God's word. You minister to God's word. You have a calling of God that's upon your life. In church, when we stand before God one day, I pray he looks at us all and says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Do not depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. If you've never made Jesus your Lord, I encourage you right now where you're at. Ask God to come into your life. Ask God to forgive you where you have failed him. Ask God to be your Lord. Commit your life tonight to serve God. Sell out to God. And anything you've been holding back, I pray tonight, you lay it down. You say, Pastor, I can't lay it down. That's the problem. I understand I couldn't either. But I kept seeking God's word. And God took it from me. Tonight, seek God's word and let God remove whatever it is that you're holding on to. God, we love you and we thank you, Father. I just pray as we go forth this week, Father, you anoint us to preach the good news. In Jesus' name, the church said.